Let's talk about graphing lines that are in standard form today. So first, let's look at standard form of linear equation. I know you've been introduced to this, but I want to go over what standard form is again. And it's written ax plus by equals c, and it's a, just a different way that we, write, that we can write linear equations. And they're very helpful for different things that we'll do in the future. But for graphing lines, really what we need to do is take this standard form and convert it to slope-intercept form because we graph lines in slope-intercept form. This standard form, ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are real numbers, and a and b are both not zero. So when we convert to standard, or from standard to slope-intercept form, the first thing we're gonna do is subtract the x term to move the entire variable term to the other side, then we're going to divide both terms by the coefficient of the y term, or coefficient of y, I could say. So let's practice doing that right now. Let's practice converting from standard to slope-intercept form because you need to be really, really, really good at this. So on number one, obviously, if nothing is in front of a variable, you can put a one there, but you don't need to. And for all intents and purposes, I'm not going to do that on this one. But I am going to draw a line down my equal sign and what we need to do is get y all by itself because slope-intercept form of a linear equation is y equals mx plus b. So we need to convert it to this right here. So I'm going to subtract the x term because that's what it tells me to do. Then y equals, and that would be what I would do to get y all by itself. Now, if I'm writing it in slope-intercept form, would I write 7 minus x or negative x plus 7? I would write negative x plus 7 because standard form would have the x term written first and then the y-intercept all by itself right there. So y equals negative x plus 7 would be how I would write this in slope-intercept form. Number two. Now for this example, I am going to put a 1 in front of that variable. And I'm going to draw a line down my equal sign. And the goal is to get y all by itself. So if I'm following the steps listed above, what am I going to do first? Subtract the x term. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. This is like solving a literal equation, okay? I'm just shifting some things around and just rearranging this equation. So negative 1y equals, and what order would I write this in? Negative 2x plus 5. Now, I don't want what negative 1y equals. I want what y equals. So what do I need to divide by? negative 1. Now both terms get divided by negative 1. So what I'm going to do first in this example is I'm going to divide this term by negative 1 and this term by negative 1. So I get y equals what is negative 2 divided by negative 1? Positive 2. And what's 5 divided by negative 1? Negative 5. So this is slope-intercept form of that equation. Let's move on to number three. Number three, again, I can put a one in front of that y when nothing is there. I can draw a line down my equal sign. You don't have to, but I'm going to. What's the first step? Subtract the x term from both sides. I get negative one y equals, what order do I write it in? Negative three x plus one. And now what do I do? Divide this by negative one. Now, you can do just like I did on number two where I divide that negative 3x divided by negative 1, 1 divided by negative 1. You could also write it like this. Everything gets divided by negative 1. y equals, that means this term gets divided by negative 1 and this term gets divided by negative 1. They mean the same thing. It's just written a little differently. So negative 3x divided by negative 1 is positive 3x. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. So that's slope-intercept form of that equation. Last one. I can draw a line down my equal sign. What do I do first? Subtract 3x. Subtract 3x. 2y equals negative 3x plus 8. Now what do I do? Divide by 2, and then what gets divided by 2? Everything. y equals negative 3x gets divided by 2 negative 3 over 2x is how I would write that. 
this becomes my slope, negative 3 over 2, and then I just write that in front of the x like that. Then 8 divided by 2 is positive 4. So that's what that looks like in slope-intercept form. So now let's talk about graphing lines in standard form. We really don't graph lines in standard form. We graph them in slope-intercept form. So the first thing we're going to do is, the, is convert all of our equations to slope-intercept form by solving for the y variable, which is what we just did on examples 1 through 4. And then we'll graph in slope-intercept form, which we did in the previous lesson. So let's look at number 5. And I've only got two examples today because hopefully once you convert to slope-intercept form, then you can graph it from there. So in example 5, it's written in standard form, and we need to convert it to slope-intercept form which remember is y equals mx plus b. So we need to solve for y, so let's do that first. What do I do first? I'm gonna move my x term over. I'm gonna do that by subtracting 5x. I get 2y equals, what order would I write it in? Negative 5x plus four, and now what do I do? I need to divide by two, and what gets divided by two? everything, every term gets divided by 2. So negative 5 gets divided by 2, and I'm going to write that as a fraction, and it looks like this. Negative 5 over 2, then don't forget that x right there, then the next term also gets divided by 2. 4 divided by 2. What is 4 divided by 2? It's positive 2. So this is that equation in slope-intercept form, and now we're gonna graph it. So what do we do when we graph lines in slope-intercept form? Well, we identify our slope and our y-intercept. What's our slope? Negative five over two, and what's our y-intercept? Positive two. So when I'm graphing lines in slope-intercept form, you must recall, what do we do first? We graph our y-intercept. Well, that's my x-axis, this is my y-axis. I'm going to go up to positive 2. That becomes my new starting point. Then from there, I'm going to use this slope to graph other points on the line. Now it's a negative slope, negative 5 over 2, so I know my line is going to look something like this, right? It's going to fall from left to right. So if I graph it and it looks the other way, I graphed it wrong. I just went the wrong direction. So my slope is negative 5 over 2. Rise 5 and run 2. So I'm going to go down 5 and over 2 this way because when I connect those points that'll give me a negative slope and I can do that again. And I could go the other way if I wanted to but all I need is two points to make a line and so I can just connect those points using my straight edge and there's my line. Let's move on to number six. So there's a lot more steps when you're graphing lines that are in standard form because the first thing you have to con do is convert that equation to slope-intercept form. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So what do I do first? I move that x term over. I move it over by subtracting 6x, and I'm left with negative 2y on the left side of my equal sign equals, what order do I write it in? negative 6x plus 10. Okay, now what do I do? I divide everything by negative 2. Make sure you don't lose any negatives. So negative 6 divided by negative 2, I'm going to do that first. And what do I get? Positive 3x, then positive 10 divided by negative 2 is negative 5. So now we have successfully converted this to slope-intercept form, and I'm going to graph it in this form. Because it's in slope-intercept form, I can easily see my slope and my y-intercept. So what is my slope? It's 3, or some of you probably like to write it as 3 over 1. What's my y-intercept? Negative 5. And if you need to recall or reference your notes from your previous notes, to determine what you need to do now once you've identified this, go ahead and your notes will say graph that y-intercept first. 
So I start at my origin and I'm going to negative five on this y axis. So I'm going to go to down five. One, two, three, four, five. Then from there, I'm going to use this slope of positive three, rise over run, to graph additional points on the line. So three over one, one, two, three over one, one, two, three over one. And I can graph as many points as possible. And I could also go this way if I wanted. And then just connect those points to make a straight line. So the only additional step that we're adding today is converting from standard to slope intercept, which you need to be able to basically do in your sleep in Algebra 1. That's the goal, to get there. So convert to slope intercept form first, and then you'll just graph it like we did in the previous lesson. And that concludes your notes over graphing lines that are initially in standard form. I hope it was helpful.